Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have the CEO of First Phosphate Corp, John Pasalacqua. John is joining us today to discuss the phosphate shortage and how it might affect LFP battery manufacturing, China's dominance in LFP batteries and how it affects the Western world, Tesla importing electric SUVs into Canada from China, and he's also going to share First Phosphate's recent drill results, future plans for drilling, He'll touch on the company's many successes within just a year, as well as talk about the new member of the team and what to look forward to with First Phosphate near term. Hey, John, welcome to The Dive. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Cassandra. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. How are you doing? Good. Good. Okay, so let's dive right into it here. Industry analysts are raising concerns about a phosphate shortage. How do you think that this will affect the production of LFP batteries? Yeah, so that's a very good one because uh, right now there, there already is a, a shortage of, of phosphate in North America. There's only about 10 to 30 years left of uh, sedimentary deposit in, in North America. Phosphate is what you know, we hear, um, and that's all um, destined for fertilizer uh, in the food industry. So there really isn't anything right now for LFP batteries. So anything that we need to produce for LFP battery has to be an above and beyond but what's even more interesting is that, you know, it's not just normal uh, phosphate for a fertilizer that goes into making LFP batteries, but you need ultra pure purified phosphoric acid. And what it, the little purified phosphoric acid that there is in North America is already all um, being used for making food phosphates, things that, like that go into Coca-Cola or that go into uh, conservatives and preservatives for food. So there's really not much of it left um, that can be used for LFP batteries. So what, the source that we need for LFP batteries has got to be a fully new one, which is kind of what we're trying to do at First Phosphate, bring online a, a fully new source of phosphate, very high purity that can make a lot of purified phosphoric acid to serve all of the battery industry needs. We saw that over 70% of lithium iron phosphate batteries are currently made in China. What do you think are the potential consequences of China's dominance in LFP battery manufacturing for the Western world? Yeah, well, it's interesting you say that over 70% of batteries are made in, in, in China. Those are lithium ion batteries. But if you look at specifically at the LFP category, it's almost like, you know, over 90%, maybe even higher. So, you know, as LFP battery becomes really the, the battery of standard choice, because it's becoming the battery of mass adoption around the world, um, all that that means is that the auto manufacturers, such as Tesla, which now has half of its uh, of its uh, of its uh, fleet on, on, on LFP batteries, just needs to import those batteries from China. So, I mean, obviously, there's a dependence there. There's an added cost, and also there's issues around carbon footprint and um, you know the uh, the environmental impacts of how these products are manufactured in China. So the requirement is really to to make LFP uh, battery in North America, just like the rest of the batteries. But in order to do that, you also need the raw materials, the cathode active materials, to do it. Of which you know phosphate is a big part of the equation, which is what we're 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 solving here at First Phosphate. So as you mentioned, there's a report that Tesla started importing electric SUVs into Canada from China. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this will be a popular trend moving forward? Well, I mean, it, it all depends, right? It, it depends on uh, how, how quickly we are able to set up our own supply chains here in North America to be able to make uh, things locally. And if, we, if we're not, then obviously we're just going to have to import them from China. But remember, when you're importing a vehicle from China, um, you know, you don't really get a, a bill of sale onto what the the carbon footprint of it was, uh, what the environmental and social conditions were to create that vehicle. And you know, when you when you really step back, and if you were to look at that, you have to ask a good question: Is it really worth um, the savings on uh, carbon emissions um, when you compare it with what was maybe the carbon emissions that went into actually making it that way? So we need to onshore our processes for making batteries and vehicles in North America, so that we actually know. How that they're made, how they're made, that they're made with the proper ESG, carbon, uh, and social, um, you know, scores that uh, we have just zero visibility on in, in China, but you know we can imagine what it what it is. Okay, now let's talk a bit about first phosphate. You reported your final winter program drill results at your Begin Lamarche property in Quebec, Canada. Can you walk us through the results and where is this leading us? Yeah, so the results were great. This was a property that we, uh, you know, done some surface sampling on, and we found some really high grade um, phosphate on surface. Um, and we found we 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 then decided to see if we could confirm that by drilling. So we drilled and we confirmed it. It's a very high grade deposit. We found grades of somewhere between you know five and up to ten percent phosphate. Um, and we found it um, all in very continuous areas. There seems to be like you know some very long strike zones. 
Um, and we think it could make, you know, a, 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 a wonderful resource. So we're going to be out there and we're going to be drilling more to sort of confirm it up more and to move it into, you know, a, a mineral resource estimate, which is a, a, a 43-101 uh, mineral resource estimate. Um, so, yeah, very exciting. It's now the second uh, uh, property of, you know, consequence uh, for the company. Is there any sense of how much more drilling needs to be done to move the project forward? Well, dr drilling is always continuous, but I mean, right now we're, we did 4,000 meters already and we feel that we can get it to a 43-101 state just with another 2,000 meters. And then obviously after that, uh, we, we can go uh, above and beyond. I mean, what's really exciting about this property, Cassandra, is that it's only 75 kilometers from the deep sea port of Saguenay. Um, and that is, you know, a, a big part of what these deposits are about. They're not only about grades, they're also about logistics, right? And we're, 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 we're close to an area where there's, um, you know, good infrastructure, there's good workforce. Um, so we're very excited about the future of this uh, property at Beijing La Marche. You recently released a review of last year's successes. What can you tell us about this? And how did you prioritize and manage these results within just one year of operation? Yeah, thank you for that. So we've, we've done a lot. We've done a hell of a lot. I mean, people tell us companies don't do this stuff in three, five years. Um, so it was a little bit all over the board. Uh, what we did, we were uh, executing on, you know, three or four different uh, main tangents that was necessary. But what we tried to do when we put out our corporate uh, update was to, you know, give organization to it all, even for us internally, you know, really focus on, you know, where do we need to go? Where do we need to put in efforts? So that's what we did. You know, our, we, we're really focusing on really being, a, you know, a, a mining company first and foremost. that takes phosphate out of the ground, concentrates it to a very high degree of purity. That's in the, you know, in, in the in the upstream. Then in the midstream is where we plan to partner with groups like Prayon that can help us to create the purified phosphoric acid. And then eventually maybe we get to LFP cathode active material manufacturer with strong partners. So we want to have our core, which is really the mining, getting the material out of the ground, using our advanced mineral, uh, metallurgy to create a very high uh, phosphate uh, concentrate, which we've already managed to do. And then after that, we want to partner with the best of the world uh, to get downstream and really capture a lot of the value add. Now let's talk about the appointment of Isabel Sheldon to the advisory board of the company. What makes her a great fit for the team? I think the greatest part about Isabel is just she, she's so friendly and easygoing and so easy to work with. And she's got such an inquisitive mind. Um, so, you know, and then the, the other part of it is, right, I mean, she's one of the world's foremost battery experts. Um, she was knighted by Her Majesty the Queen for her work in the battery space in, in England. Um, but again, I mean, the, the best part about Isabel, so easygoing and so humble. And I just love to see people with so much knowledge um, being so easygoing and just she's, she's just fit into our company like a glove. So really, really happy to have her. Okay, so lastly here, John, what are the key metrics that investors should look out for with first phosphate over the near term? Yeah, so I think the big one is, you know, our, our phosphate uh, concentrate, we've been able to get to a purity of almost, you know, 97, 98% appetite, which is almost 41% purity of phosphate within the appetite, you know, to see if we could scale that up, right? Because right now we're, we're, we're trying to scale that up to create a, a big bulk sample to send to prey on. Can we create that big bulk sample? Um, can we send that to Prana and can we make purified phosphoric acid? And then can that purified phosphoric acid be turned into LFP CAM, uh, LFP cathode active material? And obviously, we, we've got, you know, all the partnerships in place to do that. That's the plan to do it. But that's a big milestone is actually, you know, achieving that, doing what we say we're going to do. Um, and then also our PEA, Preliminary Economic uh, Assessment at uh, La Calorial. So, you know, one of those things you were saying that we did in record time, you know, we bought the property with some drill core that was associated with the property. We did a 43-101 immediately, and now we're projecting our preliminary economic assessment by the end of, of this year. But can we do that? Can we bring that in on time? And, um, you know, <laughs> those are the, the big things. And then, you know, our drilling at Beijing on la Marche, can we actually get out there and drill at Beijing on la Marche? And, uh, you know, what, what can we show up in Beijing on la Marche? Okay, great. Well, uh, that's all we have for you today, John. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing the company's update with us. That's great, Cassandra. Thank you so much. Really nice to be here. To our audience at home, thank you so much for watching. We will be back with another video, so be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell and subscribing below me there before you leave us. Bye.